Dylan and Jones finish as RB1s this year? Slim chance, I think. I think if it happens, they'll both be like somewhere in like 10 through 12, somewhere like that. Uh, I, I think they take away too much from each other to both of them, you know, or even one of them finish like top five. I, I feel comfortable saying they'll more, instead of RB1s, like top 15, definitely, definitely top 20, I think. Um, I think Jones will, is the one I still prefer. He's the one I'm drafting higher because I think he's going to get a lot of work in the passing game. Like I keep saying, I wouldn't be surprised if he's their leading receiver this season. So uh, I think, but for Dylan, like he's, he could be the goal line back. So there is a path to each. say no I, I feel more comfortable with them being like 15 or 20. I think it's it's hard for a team to have two it's really hard for a team to have two when you have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers <laughs> it's yeah. the other part of it you know if if you were talking about a team that that's just trying to figure their way at quarterback maybe you've got more of an opportunity I, I still think Jones is an RB1 I think Dylan is a strong RB2 candidate and I, I was sort of you know kind of extrapolating out from what AJ Dylan did last year if you believe, as Rodgers has suggested, that he can catch 50 passes. him somewhere into the top 10, but I think, I think that's kind of wish casting more than actual projection. So I, I do think it's a situation where Jones is an RB1. I think he finishes probably, you know, somewhere 8 to 12. Uh, and, and Dylan's the guys you mentioned, you know, around 15, 16, something like that. I think that seems a little bit more believable. You mentioned believing Aaron Jones could be Green Bay's leading receiver. We're going to learn a lot about this receiving core this year with no Devontae Adams, right? Aaron Rodgers doesn't have that safety blanket anymore. We've sort of been, you know, picking at Packers wide receivers. If there is one that you are targeting, who would it be? So my brain wants to say Alan Lazard, but... ...to be the wide receiver one... But I don't know. I could see him leading the way with like 800 yards and like seven, six, seven touchdowns. And so like I, I tend to just wait and, and go later. Like you see Romeo Dobbs here. Uh, Christian Watkins, uh, Watson goes so late that like I I'll take a late round bench upside flyer on one of those guys. But like Alan Lazard is using a starting roster spot on. And I, I easily could be wrong, but I don't know about you. I've never felt comfortable saying, like, this guy is the unquestioned wide receiver one here. I, I say that Alan Lazard is the wide receiver one kind of by default. He's the guy who's been there. He knows the system. He has at least some connection with Aaron Rodgers. And with Adams gone, somebody has to kind of step up and take that spot on the depth chart. So in that respect, I've drafted Lazard a couple of times, but he's, you know, I've been trying to get shots at Romeo Dobbs, but every time the Packers tweet out a video of him, <laughs> it gets harder. Stop it, Packers. Did you hear last week's rumor? They're having lunch, uh, breakfast together, him and yeah. Aaron Rodgers? I think, yeah, they're, they're hanging out. They're eating meals together now. So, like, if, if, if we're going by the Cooper Cup Matthew Stafford narrative, then it's Romeo Dobbs to the moon. I, I love that there's actually fantasy analysts out there who are like, who's having breakfast with each other this year? Right? Like, we need to know. We need cafeteria cams for all 32 teams to see, like, who's hanging out with one another. Which, by the way, though, I mean, Sammy Watkins is there, right? Randall yep. Cobb is there. These are veteran guys who've been in the league for a long time. Cobb has a long history with Aaron Rodgers. We're not talking about Because I could see Randall Cobb and Sammy Watkins both potentially not being great fantasy pieces, mm -hmm. but being much more useful to the Packers in real life and being like a thorn in the side and just like no one in this in, in this passing offense is going to be one that you can trust weekly. I, I, I'm guessing that someone will develop as the year goes on, whether it be Lazard or any of these other options. But early on, I with with confidence. Can't really talk up any of them. All right, so that gets us to what we normally do here. Who is the first pl uh, Packer you're drafting? Who is a sleeper? Who's a player you're avoiding? First Packer drafted, I still think, is Aaron Jones. I I'll take him in the second round. I, I took him in the second round of a draft I had this week, and uh, as my RB1, actually, I, I felt pretty good about that. Sleeper is, I don't know if this is much of a sleeper at this point, but I think Romeo Dobbs is, is the, the sleeper of, uh, Packers are, of the Packers right now because if anyone profiles to maybe be a breakout wide receiver out of this group, I think it's him. Uh, and player to avoid, like we're talking about how much we dislike the receivers. I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers because mm. 
This is a guy who doesn't run anymore. He's been relying on like uber efficiency with, with the touchdown percentage being off the charts the last two years, the interception rate being so low. I think losing Devontae Adams greatly, greatly impacts that, who is unquestionably their best red zone and end zone target. So I just have not come away with Aaron Rodgers. Really second round where I can. I love him as an RB1 this year. At that, if, I, if I'm going to go wide receiver in the first round and Aaron Jones is sitting there in the second round, I'm definitely okay with making that move there. Uh, I mean, I guess we can go Dobbs as a sleeper, even though everybody's kind of talked him up on fantasy Twitter. I guess you can also say Aaron or uh, AJ Dillon, maybe kind of a sleeper. It's sort of hard to peg, right? Because yeah. we've, we've talked so much about the Packer offense, but AJ Dillon's a guy that everybody likes who really could have a breakout season this year. The player to avoid for me, look, if you want to take a shot at Alan Lazard because he, he profiles as the wide receiver one, cool. If you want to take a shot at Romeo Dobbs because he has that breakout potential, cool. Beyond that, I'm not, I'm not taking a shot at any Packers wide receivers. I just don't. You know, Sammy Watkins is going to do his Sammy Watkins thing where he has like a huge week one and then he vanishes. Randall Cobb will be really good for the Packers in real football and not so great in fantasy football. Christian Watson, I mean, just it's kind of an unknown because we didn't see much of him yeah. in the preseason. So I, I'm just, it, it's either Lazard or Dobbs I'm drafting and everybody else uh, I'm kind of out on this year. I, the Packers 